I was talking earlier that uh, about faith. I just wanted to make a mention about faith. You know, uh, faith, having faith, and the Lord healing you is a great thing. Amen. Having faith and the Lord not healing you also is a great thing. Amen. The Bible says that there were those, and I'll text this here about a week or so ago, wasn't it? Something like that. That, you know, these all died in faith, Hebrews 11, or down, but these all died in faith having not receive the promise. Right. Now, Amen. if we die in faith, we have received the promise. Yes, that's right. We've got the promise. Right. So it's really a great thing to, to die in faith. Right. I mean, as far as the spirit is concerned, now the, the natural man, he don't really like that very much <laughs> But we're not really supposed to be natural-minded people anymore. We're supposed to be minded in spirit. And Paul said, well, we quote this scripture just about every service, but Paul said that, you know, his time, the time was at hand. He had run the race. He had kept the faith. He had finished the course. Amen. So when it comes time for us to finish the course, if we finish the course, then there is a crown of life that's laid up for us, not only for us, or me, or Paul, or Brother Daddy, or Brother Otis, but it's for all those also that love his appearing. So all of us have got that hope in Jesus Christ that we can be, we can die in faith. We don't have to worry about nothing else. If, uh, see, because one thing too is the Bible says that he didn't come to take away death, but it is. He's come to take away death, but that's not going to happen until the very end of all this. All right. Now, but he did give us something for death. He gave us something that we no longer have to fear death. Right. Amen. Yeah, we don't have to fear it. But that seems like that's what all people fear. They fear death. They don't want to die. Right. They don't want to die because they're they're, they're uncertain about what's what, what's on the other side. No. That's a lot right. of people. What am I, what is going what's going to happen over here? That's right. Well, yeah. uh, there was this doctor that explained this one time to a patient. You know, the patient he said, "Doc, how do you know there's a heaven?" And the doc says, "Well, says then what do you expect?" over there that, you know, because of the fear of death. And about that time, he had a golden retriever, I believe it was, and the golden retriever started scratching at his door. And he told the man, he says, that's my dog out there. My dog don't know what all's going on in here and really don't care. All that dog knows is that his master's in there. That's right. And he wants in here with me. Now, I got a little dog like that that just wants to be around me. You know, she loves me. Yes. Now, Sheila come home. She got up there and slept with Sheila until about 1 o'clock this morning. And then she come and got to bed with me. <laughs> you know, and she slept the rest of the night with me. And she'll probably do the same thing tonight. Uh, but when I walk in the door, she's going to be all over herself because Daddy's home. And she loves Dad. Yes. She's crazy about Dad. She loves other people, but she's crazy about Dad. And uh, so he said that dog don't know what's going on in here, don't know what all's going on in here or who's in here, but he does know that I'm in here. Amen. And he said that's kind of the same way that heaven is. We don't know what's over there or what's going to happen over there, but we do somewhat according that's to the right. word of the Lord. The word of the Lord shows us and tells us some things and we can search out these things even into a deeper understanding by the Spirit of God. Amen. Right. Amen. But He will. I know who's over there. Oh, yes. And He is Him, is him whom I'm longing right. to see. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm longing to see King oh, Jesus. I'm tired of right. what all this stuff is going on down here. That's right. 
They may not want me telling a lot of this stuff, but when we get over here a little further in Revelation, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you some stuff on the world. Alright. Today. Verse 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 13, 14, chapter 3 of Revelations. Verse 13, 14. And we're going to be talking to the last church, or the angel of the Lord is going to be talking to the last church. How many verses is that? That's eight. Eight from 14 to 22. Let's see. All right. So, huh? Nine verses. So let's... Uh, Read a couple of pieces. We're going to start with Sister Carolyn there. Number 14. Number 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness and beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. All right, now he's talking to the church at Laodicea. And, he, and he's talking, he says, these things, have the amen. Now, you know, we all know who the amen is. Uh, you know, he's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. And he is the beginning of the creation of God. Uh, the man Christ Jesus. He was the beginning. Before anything else, because the Bible says when he's making man over, over, in, over in Genesis, he said, let us make man in our image. So you know what man's got? Man's got a body. Right. And man has also got a spirit. Amen. Right? Yes, sir. So the Bible says that Jesus Christ was the lamb slain from the foundation yes. of the world. So he was there even before the foundation of the world. Right. With God. Yes. Now he was he appeared in the last times, the last days, Jesus himself preached that it was the last days. Right. Now he said, I know thy works. Right. I know what you're doing. I know how you live for me. I know how you say that you're doing this and you That's say right. that you're doing that. But let me tell you what I know about you. Right. He said, I want you to be hot. Right. Or I want you to be cold. That's I heard right. one man preach it that he wanted you. He loved either the hot or the cold. No. He loves the hot. That's right. He don't love the cold. No, sir. Right. Those are those that don't want to listen to him no how. That's right. right. Now, the ones that are playing church are halfway in and halfway out. Believe this, but they don't believe that. They don't want to, they don't want to take the fullness of the Word of God oh. into an understanding of the Word of God. Right. right. As it really is, because, you know, the Bible says that the Scripture is of no private interpretation. That means, Carolyn, that I, there ain't my revelation. There wasn't John's revelation. They all wrote it down there, the revelation of St. John the Divine. But it was not the revelation of St. John the Divine. The Bible says right here, it said it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not my, not my interpretation, not John's interpretation, not Daddy's interpretation, not A.A. Allen's interpretation, but this is the Word of God, and we've got to take it word for word as it's written. Somebody told me, you tell me, I used to hear this, you know. Well, a, you know, it says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Well, the Bible says that this is the Word. If it only says it one time in the Word, this is the Word. That's right. What yeah. Word? Why do we talk about Sunday night, wasn't it? This is the Word. That's right. 
of the gospel yes. that is preached unto you. Peter wrote it. He wrote that. All right, he thought virtue were hot, virtue were cold. But if you're lukewarm, right. I'm going to spew you. You're cold, he knows where you're going. Which he already knows where we're going anyhow. That's right. But if we're halfway on fire for God, then he's going to spew us out of his mouth. That's just like spewing out something that tastes nasty. How many ever, well, you know, <laughs> I guess it kind of goes along with coffee nowadays. You know, I like my coffee hot. Right. Some people nowadays like it cold. But I think that it's nasty myself. <laughs> uh, it's some nasty stuff. But anyway, it's like drinking coffee that's in between hot and cold. I don't want it cold and I don't want it lukewarm. I want it hot. Amen. Right. And that's the way the Lord wants you. He wants us to be on fire for him. Right. He wants us to seek him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. He wants us to put every ounce of strength that we've got into it. You know, I hear people out at the ball games and stuff, man. When they're out there at the ball games, they're screaming and hollering, especially if their batter's up. You know, they're screaming and hollering for that batter. But, you know, they seem to be ashamed screaming and hollering for the Lord Jesus. The Lord ain't nervous. Hallelujah, he ain't on nerve pills. Let me tell you something. He loves it. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. That means that he lives there. He lives in the praises of his people. Oh, I wish you were hot. Oh, I wish you were cold. Okay. Next, uh, Sister Michelle, verse 16, or Brother Otis, whoever's got the mic. I can't, I'm not watching. Go ahead. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because, I've already read that one, I'm already quoted on that one. Go ahead, Sister Michelle. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And naked, yeah. All right, we're living in the time right now. I've all, I said through every one of these churches that I can see every one of these churches in the time today. Now, we're, we got churches that are, oh, they're humongous. They are, they are a... Uh, testament to the architecture of the world today. They are big old cathedrals and they got one out somewhere out west I think it is. It's called the Crystal Cathedral. You can look through it. Glass. You know what it is? I haven't seen it but it's probably I think Dad and him have seen it but it, it's probably a beautiful place. Then, uh, I don't know about Joel Osteen and him, and I don't like calling names, but it just made me think about him because they're in a football stadium, you know. I don't know what they got it looking like on the front or the out or anything like that, but they probably got it all fancy up. Yeah. You know, a testament to their riches. Right. Yes. But that's earthly riches. That's right. Amen. You know, uh, Earthly riches ain't going to get you nowhere with God. Right. Not really. Amen. I mean, it's good to have money to give to God and stuff like that. And it takes money, but God don't have to have money. God can cause it to be without money. Right. But the thing about it is, is uh, these people, because they think they're rich and they got money, then they're really doing God's work, but they're not necessarily. Because the Bible wants us to be rich in the Word of God. He wants us to be rich in the spirit and the spiritual gifts and the anointing of his word. That's how God wants us to be rich. But the church of Laodicea, they were rich. Because thou sayest I am rich and I'm increased with goods. He's not talking to individuals here. He's talking to a church. Right. Ain't nothing wrong with having a big church if you've got the truth in it. Right. I mean, 
mean, but if you got a big church and there's no truth, right. or you're holding the truth of God in unrighteousness, That's right. then something is wrong. Amen. That's right. All right. Sister and Brother Otis, verse 18, I believe it is, ain't it? I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not fear, do not fear, and anoint thine eyes with thy eyes out that uh, thou mayest see. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Hallelujah. All right. Well, he wants them. He said here, and Brother Otis done read, I cancel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Yes. You know what that gold is that he's talking about? He's talking about our, our, uh, our spiritual life. That we have been tried by fire. Yes, sir. And we have come out smelling like a rose. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it would be just like the uh, three Hebrew children when they come out of the fire furnace. You know, they was tried by fire. God right. wants us to be tried by fire. Amen. So that we can stand. So that we can be purified. Do you know, gold is purified. They, they run it through the fire. Every time they purify, and I've heard that gold that's been tried seven times is pretty, pretty pure. Amen. But we're going to have to be tried seven times by the Spirit to reach that purification in the anointing of God. Amen. So that we can be rich. And not only that, but that we'll have the white raiment, which is the righteousness, the Bible says, of the saints. Is that right? Is that not what the Bible says? That the white robe is the righteousness of the saints? Yes. White robe. Mm -hmm. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Go over to you can go over to Hebrews the twelfth chapter. It says over there that if you're without chastisement that your bastards are not sons. Hallelujah. Him, those, them that he loves, he's going to chasten of the Lord that he can be found pure before the Lord. Oh, yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Let me get over here and I'll read some of it to you. Over in Hebrews 12, chapter. It says over here, it says in the, let's start yeah, there at the fourth verse. It says, Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Right. You know, there's not many people that can take rebuke. Right. I know of people that, that, that if they, well, I know of people that have been rebuked, and buddy, they hit the road. But you can't learn nothing like that. I have been rebuked. I've received correction. Yes. Not only from my pastor, but I've also received cor correction from directly from God. Amen. And I'd like rather the pastor talk to me than God get a hold of me. Because when God gets a hold of you, you're going to know you've been gotten a hold of it. Amen. Hallelujah. And he has got a hold of me. And I, I, I still bear the marks of it today. Yes. For he has talked to us as children. He said, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him, for whom the Lord loveth, All right. he tasteth. If he loves you, he's going to whip your butt. Right. Spiritually speaking, he's going to bring you down to where you'll listen. Amen. And if you don't listen, then he's going to 
down or turned you over. That's right. There's been those that ain't listened. Yes, sir. You know, things have happened to, to us in our lifetimes, and uh, things happen, sometimes things happen to our loved ones because we're not paying attention. That's right. That's right. Yes. Sometimes things happen in your body because we're not paying attention. The Lord wants us to pay attention. And if he loves you, he's going to give you a good old-fashioned whooping to draw you back to him. Now, there's still some that still, no matter what the Lord does, they're still going to turn their nose up and say, I ain't going to live for him. I ain't going to do what he says. I know what's right, but I ain't going to do it. There's those that do that. He says, despise not the chastening of the Lord, right. nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Don't pass out. Right. Man, don't pass out. No, Pay attention. Don't leave the church. Pay attention. Right. Don't leave the fellowship of God because he is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. And he is the end. And I've heard, I've had people tell me before, when I was younger, you know, because we were raised Pentecostal and everything, well, we just don't believe it like you do. And then I had some come say, well, you know, we all know we're going to hell. Huh? We all know we're going to hell, and when we get there, we're going to have us a big old beer bus. No, you ain't. You may think so, but you're not. You're not going to have no party. No. You know why? Because the Bible says that in hell it's gross darkness. That's right. You know, somebody would say, well, you know, we're in a fire. It looks like it would be light. No. You know, the Bible uh, talks about the gross darkness and everything. And science says that brimstone is made up of sulfuric deposits. Amen. Sulfuric deposits, which is sulfur. And suffer when it burns, it burns with a dark flame. Right. So there's no light there. You know, the Bible says, Jesus talking, he says, Where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's right. And he also said there that the worm dies not. Amen. All right? Well, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth because of the torment that they're in. They're going to be gnashing on each other with their teeth and never knowing that they're being gnashed on and they don't know that they're being gnashed on or being gnashing on somebody. All they know is they're in pain. They're in growth pain. And you know, the worst thing to me about being in hell is the Bible says that it is eternal separation from God. Eternal separation. Now let me explain something about that. I don't care who you are if you're alive in the world today you feel the presence of God whether you know it or not. Yes. When he wakes you up in the morning that is the spirit of God That's right. bringing you to, to back awake in the morning. Now, there's a lot of people that don't wake up, you know, because God done left them. The Bible says that the Spirit goes back to God who gave it. God gave the Spirit of life. They passed on. His Spirit went back to Him. So, if uh, you don't have the Spirit of God and you don't feel... I, I wonder, can you walk? And I guess you can you can't walk in this life yes. never knowing. And there are people that do it every day. You can look up and down the street never knowing that God is right there with them. Right. Right. And he's he has given them opportunity yes. after opportunity. Right. After opportunity. You know what he said? You know what he said? When over the days of Noah, he said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. He's going to get tired of waiting on That's you. Right. And he's going to take his spirit. Oh, and then you're going to pass from this life. Oh, it's different to die outside of God. 
than it is to die in God. To die in God means that you are asleep. And then at the resurrection, the Bible says, Blessed are they that have part in the first resurrection. Why? Because if they're in the first resurrection, then the second death has no power over them. What is the second death? The second death is hellfire, brimstone, the lake of fire. There's no coming back from that. I don't care if you're the biggest magician in the world. You ain't coming back. You ain't going to create no magic and come back from that. Amen. But listen. If you endure chastening, if you can endure chastening, if you can endure the whipping when you've done wrong, if you can endure it, the Lord said he would deal with you. Let's read it right here in verse uh, 7. If you're in dear chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Huh? God's going to take care of you. God's going to correct you when you're wrong if you'll be his child. Amen. Now, if you can't endure it, then he's going to give up on you because you gave up on him. Amen. Now, verse 8 says, But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, everybody's got to be chastised. Because we have all was born in sin, and we were shaven in iniquity, so we all have to receive that chastisement of God. Yes. It ain't a cushy ride. No. No. But he said he'd go with you. Right. Now that's a lot better than a cushy oh. ride and not having him with you, ain't it? Yes. Right. That's what I think. He said, if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Do you know what it means to be a bastard? That means you don't have a father. So if God ain't our father, then we are bastards. We have no father. The devil sure can't be your father. He can't do nothing for you in the end. He can't do nothing for you now. But hurt you. If you listen to him, Amen. verse 9 says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Yes, Lord. Shouldn't we? Yes, we should. Yes. We should rather be. I mean, I got some whippings in my day. And I got some whippings in since I've been in the Lord. Yes, right. So I want to reverence Him. Yes, man. Oh, yes, God. I want to reverence Him. Because you know what? He, you know, He's told us, He says, Fear not them that can kill the body. Yes. Because you know, after they kill the body, that's all they can do. All they, can. they can't do nothing else to you. But let me tell you what God can do. After he kills the body, he can also destroy the soul. Right. And that's yeah. more important to me than worrying about what some man right. can do to me. Right. I want to worry about right. what God's going to do if, right. I don't, if I'm not obedient to him. But we had our fathers. And we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Amen. For they, our fathers, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. What made them feel good? Amen. I got a bunch of whippings. And I gave my kids a bunch of whippings. <laughs> According to how I felt. May not have been right. 
But it was according to how I felt. Yes. My pleasure. But God likes, yeah, God is always right. When he gets a whole turkey, he's not making a mistake. He knows that he's trying to protect you from what's coming down the road. I don't know how we got off on this, but anyway, it's still good. Um, for, but he, for our prophet, that we might be partakers of his holiness. I want to be a partaker of His holiness. I don't care how rough the road gets. I just want Him to be right there. He said, I'll never leave you. Not forsake you, but I'll be with you always, even until the end. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. How many's ever got a whipping and cried? I got one one time. I'm not, I, anyway, that's my dad. It was after his pleasure. Yes. I got a whipping one time with a 50-foot plow line folded up where it was about yay long. And I was determined I was not going to cry because I was almost a grown man. Oh, So... After a, after a few licks with that thing, you know, and it was hitting probably 20 times at one time, every one time. It was probably like a lot like the cat of nine tails what Jesus got hit with. Not only did he get one stripe, he got nine. Every time that thing hit him, he got nine stripes. And he finally, he stopped and he said, so you think you're not going to cry, are you? And I was determined I was not going to cry. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, you're going to cry. And he said, then when you start crying, he said, I'm going to weep until you stop crying. How many have ever tried to stop crying while you're getting a whipping? Oh, yeah, that's what he told me. I remember it very well. <laughs> All because... I told my stepmother at the time that it was my horse. She was telling me what to do with my horse, and I said, it's my horse. So I got a whooping for it. But anyway, he whipped me, and he whipped me, and he whipped me because I was stubborn. You know, I, I was stubborn. They used to tell me that I was so stubborn that I could argue with the sign post and win. <laughs> if the sign said stop, no, it said start, and that, it would be the truth. <laughs> you know, because I was so stubborn. I was stubborn. So finally, I broke down. You know, after a few minutes, you can't only stand so much. So I broke down. And I started crying. And he quit whipping me. And he said, are you ready? He said, now I'm going to whip you till you quit. And then that started. And I think it lasted way longer than the other one did because I couldn't stop snubbing. How many know what snubbing means? But I couldn't stop. Oh, y'all, let me tell you something how hard it is to stop. If you've never had to stop snubbing while you're being whipped, you have been blessed because that is tough. Yes. But I'm telling this to let you realize, not that I hold anything in that thing, Daddy. I was stubborn. Yeah. I was stubborn. He never, I mean, I don't think he ever broke my will. It had to be the Lord that broke it. Because I was still stubborn after that. Yes. It didn't, uh, I mean, it fazed me for the moment. Yes. But no chastening for the present yes. seemed to be joy. Oh. It's nothing to get up and <laughs> I, I, I just got me an old fashioned whipping. <laughs> no. It ain't joyous at all. It's very grievous. It's very grievous. 
it hurts down to the very core of your being. It does. So when God gets a hold of you, it hurts a whole lot worse. Amen. Yeah, it hurts a whole lot worse. I laid in a bed for almost a solid year screaming at the top of my lungs because I thought I was right, but I knew I wasn't right. There was a thought there saying, you're, you know, you're preaching, you're singing, you're attending church, but there was this one little something that I couldn't necessarily put my finger on, but it was that I just wasn't humbling myself before the Father in the right way. I laid there on that bed, and I cried, I prayed. Y'all done heard this so many times, you can probably recite it yourself. But, <laughs> you, know, you know, when the Lord, I still, I still had to go have surgery on my back, you know, but the Lord came to me, and he spoke to me, and he told me that whether I lived or died, I was his. I belong to him. And you know something? I cried some more, but it was a different kind. It was a different kind of tears. It was a joyous cry. Hallelujah when the Lord did that. Woo! Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. I received some exercise in there, y'all. <laughs> I received some exercise. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Oh, yes, God. And make straight paths for your feet. Make them straight. Right. Anything that's crooked, anything that don't line up, tin for tat for God's right. word. You know what the Bible says? He said, line upon line. Yes. Precept upon precept. Amen. He said, here a little, there a little. That's, right. that's got to line up with the word of the Lord. We've got to be right, right in tune with it. Amen. Yes. Make Amen. straight paths. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Uh-huh. I'm talking about those that are spiritually lame. We don't need to be spiritually lame. Did you know I done told this before? Woo, I'm hot, y'all. I'm going to say it again. When the children of Israel come out of Egypt, there wasn't nobody lame. There wasn't nobody sick. No. They wasn't dragging nobody yes, on no sick bed. Yeah. Hallelujah. And they wandered through the wilderness for 40 years. And the clothes that they had on their back never wore out. Right. The shoes that they had on their feet, Amen. they never wore out. Right. Hallelujah. How can a pair of shoes last you when you wear them every day for 40 years? That's right. That was some yeah. Holy Ghost shoes, wasn't it? Amen. But we need to put on them Holy Ghost shoes, don't we? That's right. Yeah. He said, Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Let's be healed. Right. Let's be healed. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. I'm not going to sin unless we live in holiness. You know why? Because he said in his word, he said, be holy, for I'm holy. Now, a lot of people don't think that that, that, that that really relates to them. It's kind of like when Jesus said, be thou perfect even as your Father which in heaven is perfect. Huh? What does that mean? Now, I don't think we can be perfect, but Jesus just lied to you then. He told you to do something that's impossible for you to do. No. He never told nobody something that was impossible to do. Right. Sister Angel, what right. verse are we on? Uh, 20. 20. Let's get there. Behold! Uh, 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he will be. All right. If any man will open the door. Now, I know how we got over in Hebrews 12. Verse 19 said, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be thou zealous, therefore, and repent. So, let's repent. Let's repent. If we're not doing right, let's repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking at the door. He's knocking through his word. Hear the word. Hear the word. Have we got ears to hear with? Or is it just coming in this area and one out this area? You know, the Bible says that Jesus was talking to, I think he was talking to the scribes and Pharisees. I believe it's what he was talking to at the time. But he said, this generation is likened to those that are like children in the marketplace. That are nine-nine and hee-hawing and you can't come over here and we can't come over there. We're going to beat your rear or you're going to beat our rear. Something like that. You know, back and forth. This generation is a lot like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Amen. Verse 21. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne. In my throne. Even as I also overcame, I am set down with my father in his throne. All right. Now, here's a great promise right here. If we can overcome... I mean, what is the reason we can't overcome? Why is it we cannot overcome? Why? But because we won't let, we won't move out of the way and let God have our lives completely. Turn our lives completely over to Him and say, Lord, I want to live as you live. I want to walk as you walk. I want to talk as you talk. I want to spit like you do. Lord, I want to walk in your image and in your manifestation. Lord, I want to walk in the spirit of Almighty God. So let's overcome. That's right. And if we overcome, we're going to sit down with him. It is strong. And he said here, he said even and I, as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. Now this message, this can mess a lot of people up. But when he's talking about the father, he's talking about the spirit, the anointing. See, Jesus here is separating himself, flesh and spirit, because he's still making intercession for us, even though he has already became one. Right. He still makes intercession. His blood still makes intercession for us. The blood of a man. You know, a lot of people right. say, well, you know, blood of God. No, it wasn't the blood of a God. God, you can't kill God. Right. He had to be born of a woman and, and bleed blood to be able to die. Right. So that's what the distinction is here in between him and the Father. It's the blood and the Father. Because right. the Bible says that it's all going to go back to God anyway. Right. Yes. After he has made all of his enemies kneel at his feet, yes. everything is going back to the Spirit. Man. God is still Jesus. Yes. Jesus is still God. Amen. But everything went back to the Spirit. So that no flesh could glory in his presence. I'm talking about the son of man. No flesh can glory in his presence. It's all got to be of the spirit of Almighty God. See, this is an anointing. This is, a, this is something that people don't know about. So people need to learn about. To know the difference between what God is, what Jesus is talking about here. He's all one spirit. Right. But he's sitting down with my father in his throne and he says in the 22nd verse he that hath an ear 
You know, there's a lot of people that have ears, but they don't have they don't have the ear. There's a lot of people that can hear a lot of things going on in this world. They can hear the sound of the jet going over when it flies over their head. They can hear a train as it goes down the track. They can hear a diesel truck as it drives by. They can hear the sirens on the fire truck when it goes by. But they can't hear the voice of God. But yet they have ears, but they can't hear. That's what the Lord said. He says, I have given them ears that they can't hear. Why? Because they won't listen. They won't pay attention. So therefore, he's going to take, and just like he told the woman at the, at when he was at the table sitting there, and she come begging him for her daughter's life. She said, Master, she said, I want you to heal my daughter. He said, is it me for me to take the children's bread and give it to dogs? And she said, nay, Lord, but the dogs do eat. The dogs do eat. They do eat from the crumb that follow from the master table. And they do. Even to this day, dogs eat from the crumb that fall from the master's table. So we need to be humble. You know, the Bible says that Jesus, he said that her faith was so great. She was a Gentile woman. But he he saw that her faith was great. And you know what he told her? He said, you go your way. <laughs> your daughter's made whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that not the same place where he said he's never such great faith that he so not? Never saw no not in Israel. She had a great faith that she wasn't even of the children. She was of the dogs. But the Lord saw her faith. Lord, see our faith tonight, Lord. Lord, anoint us from on high and lead us and guide us into your word, Father. Further and further, Lord, as we go, Lord, and Lord, as we now the day that we're going to that we're going to be with you, God, forever. Lord, let us know you, Lord, in the power of your word. God, in the power of your word, Lord Jesus, in the power of your word, God. Lord, because in the word there is power. Jesus, yourself, Lord, you spoke and you said the words that I speak. They are power. They are spirit. And they are life. There's power in the spirit. There's power in life, God. You are the door to life. <laughs> Go that way and sin no more. Hallelujah. I am the door of life. No man cometh into the sheepfold. Hallelujah. Step through the door. That any man that climbs up any other way is the same as a thief and a robber. Any other way. We can't come in by Buddha. There are probably people that are really trying hard to get to heaven by Buddha. Right. There's some that's trying to get to heaven through Mohammed. Allah. Yes. But they're missing the mark. Right. Man. The Quran speaks of a man named Jesus, that he was a great prophet. He was more than a prophet. Oh, yeah. They just yeah. couldn't recognize exactly who he was because it had to be given to the children first. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then when they rejected it, and then he turned them to the Gentiles. Yeah. But now it seems like that so many of the Gentiles are rejecting the truth for fables, for stories, for somebody to tell them some good thing. I like good things. How many like good things? I like good things. I want my good things to come from God. Don't tell me something that came from God. I want to be just like Ahab was when when uh, Micaiah came before him. He says, how many times have I adjured you? That's right. When you talk to me, that you talk to me, in the name of the Lord. Right. I want somebody to tell me something in the name of the Lord. Don't tell me what you think. Tell right. me in the name of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. In every good and every perfect.
perfect gift. It still comes down on the Father's life. Hallelujah. And that Holy Ghost is coming down. And you know what? You know, there are gifts of the Holy Ghost. Yes. There's more than one Holy Ghost. There's gifts of the Holy Ghost. Right. According to the Bible. Amen. But it's all of the same Spirit of God. Right. There's only one Spirit, and that's Amen. God's Spirit. Amen. Uh, and there's only one true Spirit, and that's God's Spirit. Now, there's some evil spirits out there, yes. but I don't even pay them no recognition. They'll be liar the Father of them. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo, it's time for him to go. Right. He knows his time is going, Brother Junior. Right. All right. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know what we'll do next week or not. But I want to give everybody an opportunity from verse, from chapter 1 to chapter 3 to let us talk about it. You can tell me what you think and what you feel and pray about it and if you got questions you want to know more about it maybe the Lord will give us the answers to it I know that he will if we ask him because he said he would he said he would give it to us he wouldn't withhold any good thing is that what he said I don't want more than hold, withhold any good thing I mean his word is the greatest thing that I could ever say that we can receive because we got the word of God then we got the fullness of God. Right? If we got the Word of God living inside of us, then that is the fullness of God. He'll give us everything. He'll show us everything. He'll open our understanding. All we got to do is search it out by the Spirit. So I said this. I think I said this about the second night we started this, or the third night, that when we get to the end of the churches, we'll have a discussion about the churches. So, uh, maybe Wednesday night, that's what we can do. Is anybody interested in that? All right, we got Sister Angela interested, Sister Carol interested, Brother Otis. Everybody, I believe, is interested a little bit. <laughs> yes. I'm interested, too. I like learning. Yes. And, you know, I've learned a lot of things through other people. Yes. God teaches me through people. Sometimes he shows me the thing in a dream. Sometimes it just comes to me in the Word. Thank you, Lord. And that's what I really like. And I like it when it comes to me in the Word. I'm laying there, you know, and all of a sudden, bam, the Word gets me. And it's so good. Yes, the Lord, thank you for showing me that. You know, that just makes me feel so good. I want to walk closer to him to where I can see more. I want to get so close. You want to say something, Sister Carolyn? Just He's praising praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. All right. So I guess we can all stand and we can uh, come on, everybody come up here and let's pray for that again. I mean, too much prayer, ain't no such thing. Uh, somebody said, well, pray about it and forget it. Well, why can't we just keep praying about it? <laughs> no, don't forget it. The Lord ain't forgot it. But we're just going to stir it one more time. We got not. We don't have to stir the Lord, really. We got to stir us. We got to stir our faith. Our faith has got to become strong. We got to strengthen ourselves in the Holy Ghost, in the Word of God, by faith in the Word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. The Father, Lord, as we anointed the Lord, Lord, I know, God, for without a shadow of a doubt, God, that your word says that you will heal all of our sickness and disease. And that the Christ was placed upon your back that we might receive healing. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, Lord, increase our faith, God. I've heard that prayer before. Increase our faith, Father. Let our faith be increased upon you, Lord, and upon this one thing, God. Lord, that you would touch him, Father, and that you would heal him, God, right now, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right? All right. I want, yeah, I want to tell you something.
there. I had a thought while we was praying. Well, what if he what if he goes on to meet the Lord after we pray and we're having faith? Well, we're having faith either way. We're having faith that he's ready to go. Hallelujah. That the Lord's going to take him in his arms. And you know, it's kind of like that song Dottie Rumbo wrote. Let's see what, what how it go. Uh, I'm going to fall asleep in the cradle of love, and I'm never going to feel the sting of death. Hallelujah. You don't feel the sting of death. See, God took the sting out. He took it away. I, all we got to do is believe. But I'm still believing and holding on because I don't, I don't want him to go nowhere yet. I want him to be around for at least 40 more years in good health. His eyes healed, his legs healed, and everything. I mean, God can do it. Ain't nothing impossible for God. I mean, what was it? Uh, Methuselah lived to be 969 years old. I mean, what's, what's that? What's 140 to God or 130 to God? Nothing. It's just a drop in a bucket. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, yes, for the healing of all these. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let you all grab a hold here. We're going to agree for all of those that are sick. Brother William had stroke. God's the healer of stroke. Sister Tab, I talked to her this afternoon on the way to church, as a matter of fact. Lord, right now, Father, Lord, as we agree. Oh, and touching these yes, things. Lord, we know that your power today is beautiful. Oh, Lord, let us pray always the Lord, we know that Lord, we know the Spirit of God. Lord, let us anoint His voice with the Lord of grace, Lord. Lord, let us mercy with God. Lord, in the throne room.
So this is already in heaven. His blood is already there because the blood's there. Yes. The blood's there. And uh, there was a song Brother Larry sings one time, and it says, One dark night in Egypt land, you know, there was going to be, uh, and I'm just going to tell you about it. Everybody knows about it. Anyhow. One dark night in Egypt land, this little boy, he went to bed and he got worried. I don't know if this actually happened. But he got worried that the blood that they put on the lintels and the doorposts of the house had come off. And they knew that the Bible said, or that the Lord had said that the blood was there to, for the death angel to pass over. So anybody's house that didn't have that blood on the doorposts and the lintels, the death angel went in there and got the first born. And so all of this happened. But the little boy, he, he cried out, this is all make-believe as far as I'm concerned. It may have really happened, but I don't know that it did. It don't mention it in the Bible, but probably, you know, being little boys and stuff like that. But he'll probably done that and asked the father. And the father said, son, you don't have to worry. The blood is still there. And, and, and then I'll come on over, you know, come on over into the time of Jesus when Jesus hung on the cross when the blood was applied to the doorpost and the lintel. Yes. That's what it represented. The blood was applied there. So is the blood still there? Well, the blood is still there. Yes, it is. The blood is still there for our salvation. The blood is still there for our healing. That is a great thing to think about. It's still there. It ain't went nowhere. It's still up there in heaven. Hallelujah. And it's overshadowed with the cherubims. And Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus is the only mediator between God and man. Meaning between man and the Spirit. Because he brought together the two. See? He's the mediator. So that means he's there mediating, which is an intercessor. He's there doing that for us, Brother Jesus. He's there doing that. Hallelujah. I just thought I'd throw that in for good measure. <laughs> I hope that helps somebody. The blood is still there. The blood ain't went nowhere. Still there. Hallelujah. But it will come off one day. So we need to be in touch with him before it does. Amen. Amen. All right. This I'm about to fall out here. This has been a glorious night. I feel wonderful in spirit, but my body is about to pass no way. Thank you, Brother Junior. Thank you, Brother Junior. Appreciate that, man.